Everybody throw your hands up. And then salute. First of all, I'm going to show you guys where you can get some copper. And then I'm going to show you guys where you can get some iron. So we are at the copper location right here. Check it out on the map. This place here is loaded with copper to mine. And it has a uh, arrow, the stone breaker, protecting it. Um, so if you haven't killed him yet, I highly suggest going here. But this is one of the first places you want to go in the game to collect all your copper. The fight is simple. When he does his bow every time he stacks, just stay on his back and whack him. Alright, next we got the iron mine. And um, one of the first things you're going to see is there's this lady named Murdith in there. And she's pretty OP when you're low level. So I would just try to avoid her. I think the appropriate level to be at this mine is roughly around like 34 to 44 so like it's the farming and then here's the best iron location i found in the game you're gonna see a lot of explosions and stuff like that but basically i think it's stay in the circles most boss games are like that that's only if you want to you know take some damage or something like that Hit the rock. No, don't hit the rock. Do it. Hit the rock. After you heavily abuse the rocks, you decide to ride back home because now you got all this copper and iron. If you don't have a horse yet, that's just too bad. My horse is pretty amazing. So now you arrive to him and you're like, I got all this iron, I could get all this epic gear, and you're like, what? I can't make iron yet, I have to unlock it. So now we're going to go to the blood altar and we're going to see what we have to do to unlock iron. And it's a little confusing, but you have to kill Clive before you kill Quincy, and the reason is... Clive unlocks a explosion box which allows you to blow up the gate to go to Quincy so we gotta go kill Clive first so let's click on Clive and track his blood now I'm gonna take you to the sulfur camp this is the location of where you'll get sulfur and where you'll kill Clive so basically at this point you just want to kind of get used to circles Anytime you see a circle, get out of it. Do you notice how I stepped right out of the circle? It's not really right. It's left. How to beat Clive? Well, it's pretty simple. Stay out of the circles. Now that you're a circle pro, I think you should be able to handle this part with ease. Yeah, that's That's a circle, that's a circle, that's a circle, that's even more circles, and even more circles. Now that we have our circles bachelor's degree, we could go back home and make a alchemy table bench where we could craft a explosion box. Now there is a way to skip Clive. Basically, you have to kill a ferocious bear, but if Clive is challenging to you, I wouldn't suggest ferocious bear because he's even more ferocious. So let's track Quincy, and he is literally located right next to my house. How awesome is that? Closest fight I've done so far. You probably noticed these gates before, but couldn't get in there. But this is how you do it, is you just grab your explosion box and put it on your item inventory and put it in front of the gates, and you smack it, and it goes, ba-boom. What are you doing behind a box, Bob? <laughs> Alright, so now what you need to do is just make your way up. You're gonna climb the Mount of Mordar. It's not really that high, but 
He'll be there in the next minute. Always taunt bosses for good luck and good measure. Now, Quincy the Bandit King, he's actually a pretty tough fight, so I can't suggest him at my level or lower, but I would suggest at his level or with a friend. A story worth telling. Wow, Mr. Boss. What a big mace you got. That's not about how big your mace is, it's about how you use it. How I like to do this fight is I like to mostly attack him from range just because I notice he counter attacks pretty quick and so it just seemed a little easier to do that one. So basically how you do this fight is he's going to slam his shield and you're going to see four earthquake rows getting placed on the ground and what you need to do is just avoid them and what I notice is a lot easier to move them back and forth. He also does a shield deflection, so if you're casting from far away, you just gotta watch out from that. That way you can He also summons minions that throw nets on you that will slow you down, so I like to take them out first thing on this fight to make the fight easier. And for his final move, he likes to charge you looking like a fireball with his shield. And you basically just need to step aside, but if you think you're going to get hit, you definitely need to dodge. You just always have that dodge available. One, two, skip, three minutes. The final phase, he's going to do three charges, and when he's done doing his three charges, he's going to be stationary for a few seconds, so get ready to do some damage. Well, this is new. Congratulations, you could finally craft iron. Now the waiting begins. Now that uh, Clive and Quincy are dead, we could make some iron and we could finally finish the quest Throne of Command by making a throne. Oh man, I was waiting for about like 10 minutes and I was like, only a couple irons were done <laughs> in this amount of time. And so I decided to just go have lunch. And when I came back, I was like, there's only like 20 irons made. So just a heads up, you basically got to go AFK after you farm a bunch of iron to get it smelted into ores. Smelted into iron ignites, I mean, not ores. Anyhow, approximately an hour to hour and a half later, I could finally make my blacksmith, and I think I could actually craft my first item. I'm stoked. Alright, that's all for this episode. I just want to thank you guys, and if you like the video, throw a like up and subscribe. Have a great one.